Hello, welcome to another vlog. Loads of little bitty things that I want to cover in this one, so let's get started. First, my Makita plunge saw has a problem which is gradually getting worse and actually it's failed in a really dangerous way and it has caused an accident. I bought it new in the summer of 2019 and it's now January 2023, so it's about three and a half years old and it's had lots and lots of use in that time. So the problem with it is that the plunge mechanism doesn't spring back anymore. There's more resistance when I plunge down and as you can see it won't go back again unless I physically move it back. And it was a pretty frightening moment when I found out because I just made a cut and then I lifted the saw off the track while the blade was still spinning, put the saw down onto the track, not realizing that the blade was still exposed and it cut into the track and caused the track to kick back into my body, which startled me as you can imagine, as it all happened very quickly. So anyway, I'm gonna to try to have a look inside to see if this is something that I might be able to fix myself. I'm not particularly good at this type of stuff, to be honest, but it's definitely worth having a look, I think. I've already opened the blade housing, but there's not really anything I can see in there that could be a problem, so I'm now going to remove the base plate. All right, there's quite a lot of dust in there. I have always used the saw with dust extraction, but it seems like it's pretty clogged up anyway. This area here is where the saw pivots, and behind all of that dust was an Allen key bolt, so I started by removing that. On the inside I couldn't really see anything but I wondered if this was some kind of lubrication point to get the saw moving again so first I blew away the dust with my air blower and I've got some dry PTFE spray here so I'll spray some of that in and I've also got some of this lithium grease so I'll work that in the hole too. Then I added the bolt back in there which I assume is going to push all that grease into where the saw pivots. I was well chuffed with that. Let's test it out. Problem solved. Recently I made a video about our new wood stove and the particle emissions. And that video got a lot of views, so for anyone who enjoyed that video, here are a couple of updates. Firstly, a lot of people asked what air quality readings I would get outside the house, and I was curious about that too, so let's figure that out. And bear in mind that the PM 2.5 readings in our living room usually average somewhere between 0 and 10. And when we have the wood stove on, those readings don't really change at all unless you leave the door open for a while when refueling. But even then, as long as you're burning responsibly, i.e. dry wood with a low moisture content, it barely changes. So I'm currently at the back of our house next to a big open field, as you can see, and I've got this USB power device which I'm going to use to power up the air quality monitor and I'll take readings out here three days in a row, and then at the same time, I'll also take readings at the front of our house right next to a very busy road. So I'll give this a few seconds just to stabilize, and then we'll take a reading. So for these first experiments, our wood stove wasn't in use. I can't say for sure whether my neighbors are burning anything or not, but the reading on day one was averaging around 14. So now I'm out by the busy road, as you can probably hear. And interestingly, the readings don't really differ much from the top of the garden, but like I said, I'm going to do this three days in a row and we'll see what happens. By the busy road, the average reading was around 15. Surprising to me as I thought it would pick up more pollution from the road. On day two by the field, the readings were averaging around 24. And by the road, the readings were much higher, averaging around 38. On day three by the field, averaging around 27 and by the road, 46. So then on day three, I went and lit a fire to see how that would affect the readings, and I only burn dry wood. The stuff I'm burning here measured about 9% moisture content, and that's important to minimize pollution. And then I wandered around outside, taking several readings, and most of those readings didn't really differ to the readings I took previously when the wood stove wasn't lit. Occasionally, in some areas of my garden, if there was a gust of wind, the readings would peak at around 76, but then they would drop down again. So in summary, based on my tests, does using my wood stove create pollution outdoors? Yes, occasionally, if you happen to be downwind of it. Are those particle levels anything to be worried about? No, I don't think so. Secondly, shortly after I posted my video, my friend Andy Mack at Gosforth Handyman put out a video covering similar topics, i.e. air pollution. Although he did lots more research and delved deeper into the detail on it all and basically blew my video out of the water. So for anyone who's interested in that stuff who might have missed it, I'd highly recommend checking it out and there'll be a link in the description box below.
A quick follow up about our roofing work and ceiling repairs following the water damage caused by our roofers when our bungalow was being re-roofed a few months back. I made a series of three videos all about that and I'll link to them below. I also want to make it really clear that the mistake that caused the water damage was done by our roofers, i.e. the guys responsible for the membraning, battening and tiles, and not by Robin Clever and Ed who did the carpentry work for us. Some people seem to jump to the wrong conclusion on that somehow, so obviously I didn't make it clear enough in the videos, which I'm now kicking myself for. Besides, I don't think Robin is even capable of making mistakes because he is a superhuman. But anyway, the ceiling is all sorted the water damaged plasterboard was removed, new boards installed and the whole ceiling re-skimmed and then we primed it with some watered down emulsion and painted it ourselves and it looks perfect now so very happy to have that sorted. I also managed to weigh in the old lead that came off the roof at a scrap metal yard and here's how much I made on that and I eventually sold all of the old roof tiles that were in decent condition too. I'll pop up the detail on screen now. In hindsight was it worth the hassle? Selling the lead, yes, definitely. Selling the tiles, probably not. The amount of time and effort involved in stacking them all, and then anyone who sells secondhand things will relate to this, but all of the messing about, responding to people who are interested and time wasters and people who don't show up when they say they will and all of that stuff, and then also helping the people that do want to buy some tiles to load everything up, ready for them to take it away. All of that took so much time and it wasn't really worthwhile for the amount of money we made back on the tiles, but. I've always felt like I've been programmed to try and salvage things and prevent things going to waste, so I don't have too many regrets. I'd like to thank Tradeify for sponsoring this video. Tradeify is an all-in-one job management application for mobile and desktop, designed especially for busy tradespeople. It helps you to deal with incoming inquiries, raise quotes, issue and track invoices, manage timesheets, appointments, reporting, and loads more, freeing up your time so that you can get on with the stuff that you want to be doing. For a free 14 day trial, use the link in the description box below. And if you'd also like to get 50% off Tradeify for three months, once the trial expires, you can use the promo code RAG AND BONE when you sign up. Recommended viewing is where I like to talk about some YouTube channels that I've been enjoying lately. And I have two UK based woodworking channels to mention this time. The first is Martin Murray Wood Design, a channel that mixes crafting and woodworking projects with original and interesting ideas and innovation with entertainment and a dry sense of humour that I find really enjoyable. I first discovered Martin's channel via a video he did about making some wooden scissors and since then he's made a wooden blanket, some really cool 3D birds and got creative with a set of plug cutters. Great videos, do have a look at Martin's channel, link in the description box below. The second is Northern Works, a chap called Pete who is making really cool projects in his garden with very basic tools, which is very much how I was making projects before I built my first workshop seven-ish years ago. So it's very relatable and inspirational content for anyone who hasn't got a workshop full of tools. Although the difference between the stuff I was making back then best described as rustic, and the stuff that Pete is making now is that he clearly has a more keen eye for refinement and design in his projects with some nice mid-century modern stylings. Really well put together videos as well, so that channel is called Northern Works, link down below. A few of you have asked how our new cat, Hazel, who I introduced in a previous video when I made these scratching boards, is settling in alongside Mickey the cat. When she moved in, we managed to keep the cat separate in the house for about a week while they got used to each other's scent. And then when we finally got to introduce them, Hazel was a little scared. She's nowhere near as confident a character as Mickey is, bless her. But they seem to be getting along really well, especially recently we've caught them grooming each other quite a bit. Honestly, get a room. And occasionally they'll snuggle up beside each other and fall asleep. They also play with each other quite a bit. I wouldn't say they were best buddies yet, but she's definitely settled in well. She's part of the family and she loves sitting on the beanbag in front of the wood stove. Leo from the Hand Eye Craft channel kindly sent me a sample of his wood finishing wax and what's interesting about this is that it's vegan friendly as it's made using carnauba wax, I think I'm saying that right, rather than the more commonly used beeswax and it smells really nice, it smells a bit like custard. Leo has a great channel too which I'll link to below. Cheers Leo, I look forward to trying this and thanks for the sticker as well. Leo hasn't yet got his online store up and running, so if you'd like to order some, get in touch with him via email or on Instagram. I'll leave links in the description box. Next, a little bit about what's coming soon to the channel. 
I've noticed recently that my non-woodworking videos seem to be performing on average about three times better than my woodworking videos, which is a bit of a shame seeing as this is and always will be predominantly a woodworking channel. However, not only are the more DIY related videos performing well, but I actually enjoy making them just as much as the woodworking videos. Plus the DIY videos I'm making are generally stuff that I need to get done around the home anyway. So more often than not, I figure if I'm going to do the work, then I may as well set up a camera and film it. Anyway, all that to say that the next three videos coming to the channel are going to be about renovating our storeroom, which is an old single garage that's attached to our bungalow and I encounter a major problem along the way that I need to resolve. So please do stay tuned and make sure that you're subscribed for that and more coming soon. Thanks for watching.